Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in for our monthly webinar series. If you've been following along, you have already had a great introduction to Capture One last month with Karsten and IX Capture with James a month before. Today, we're going to talk about using our Phase One cameras with DJI drones. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Ryan Boswell, new to Phase One, but have been working in the aerial survey industry for the past seven years and have been involved with drones for the last four. In that time, I helped companies set up drone departments and figure out the best way to use drones for both mapping and inspections. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out after the webinar. I'm always happy to talk and give any advice from my experience. We are Phase one, we are a lead, world leading provider of medium format digital imaging systems and solutions for industrial applications and uh, professional photographers. We are specialists in providing imaging breakthroughs from high resolution camera systems to advanced software solutions for better and more productive imaging workflows. This comes from our 25 years in business providing camera systems for professional photographers. Uh, phase one industrial started six years ago to create more ruggedized industrial systems utilizing our advanced chips and software and focusing on imaging accuracy for industrial applications ranging from aerial image acquisition through machine vision to homeland security our range includes the original ixa system then moved on to the ixu and ixurs and now we have moved on to our IXM, which incorporates our new Reliant Shutter technology. And this allows us to provide a better ROI with half a million exposures guaranteed. Phase one is a market leader in medium format imaging. We are a trusted brand with more than 100,000 satisfied customers. We have a worldwide distribution infrastructure providing 24 seven customer support throughout our worldwide offices. Uh, that allows us to really provide a thoroughly customer-centric approach to our sales and, and distribution. You'll see here, this is how phase one is laid out across the globe. Uh, our headquarters is in Copenhagen. Uh, in Israel, you'll see our R&D center and the headquarters for phase one industrial. In Japan, we have a lens manufacturing facility and then we have sales and support in North America, in Denver, Colorado, uh, in Cologne, Germany, and in Hong Kong to service uh, people all around the world. So now, getting on to the main point, how to get the most out of Phase One and DJI drones. Phase One's cameras are a perfect match with DJI's larger platform, the M600. With our custom-made integration kit, the camera easily plugs into the M600 and can be completely controlled via our app over the built-in light bridge connection. In regards to the setup, there are three main parts that we're gonna go over today. The physical connections, which consists of connecting the power to the Ronin, the HDMI to the light bridge, and the control cable to the SDK port of the A3 flight controller. Then we have to configure the aircraft and camera in order to be able to talk to each other. And finally, we'll be on the flight planning. In order to configure the aircraft, we move on to DJI Assistant. This is a simple software provided by DJI. You can download it from their website. Once you have it up and running, you connect the M600 to your computer with a USB cable and power up the drone. As soon as it connects, you'll see the M600 come up on the front page of DJI Assistant. Click on that, and you'll come to a page that looks like this. Within the DJI Assistant application, you'll see on the left a uh, row selected for SDK. It stands for a Software Development Kit and how DJI allows us to interact with their system. Once you go into the SDK menu, you want to enable API control and ground station status. After making sure the baud rate is set to 115-200, the camera will be able to communicate 
with the drone system. Then we move on to the camera setup. Since our cameras are designed to work, uh, are designed for flexibility, we have to make sure they are configured correctly for the DJI interface. Uh, luckily for us, it's a very straightforward process. With the IXU system, a lot of this could be performed on the rear screen. However, with the new IXM, you're going to need to use Capture One or IX Capture on a PC. Once you connect the camera to your computer, you will come up to, this is Capture One in this instance. You'll see on the left, we are in the camera selection mode, and then you'll scroll down to camera settings. Once you go in there, scroll down the list until you see serial link, and from the dropdown, select DJI link. This tells the camera to look for the flight controller and the interface we set up earlier in DJI Assistant. Then scroll down a little further until you find the HDMI selection. Under Layout, uh, make sure that you get the drop down to DJI. This allows it to uh, lay out the HDMI overlay with a histogram that makes it much easier to figure out your exposures correctly. And then as you move further down, you scroll down and you will see a setting for format storage card. Uh, I recommend whenever you have a new card or whenever you're going out for a new mission uh, to format your card through this interface. Next, we'll move on to the flight planning software. Uh, in regards to flight planning, there are a range of options currently available. I am just pointing out a couple of them here. Uh, and personally, I use DJI Ground Station Pro because of the detail and flexibility that it allows. That is also what I'm going to be covering for the west, rest of the webinar here. However, there are other options I'll briefly touch on. Uh, Pix4D, in particular, um, allows you to fly a double grid pattern uh, that, depending on your application, can save you time on clicks. You could do the same in Ground Station Pro, but it would be two separate flights that you'd have to set up. Uh, Map Pilot is a good piece of software. Uh, however, they have a limitation of 9,000 pixels on their custom camera. So this will only work with our 550 megapixel systems. And then finally, Drone Deploy uh, is well loved throughout the industry. It has a marketplace for extensions that allow an number of additional use cases. So the software you use really comes down to your particular use case, but feel free to experiment with them. Uh, our camera systems will work with any of them. For Ground Station Pro, once you first open it up, the first screen you come to uh, will look like this. You'll see here on the left, the list of uh, missions that you've flown previously and a new mission button. Once you click new, you will come to this screen. Uh, you'll want to, for most missions, use the 3D map area in the center here. Uh, photo map is for DJI cameras. Uh, so that one will not work with us, but the rest of them will. So depending, again, on your application, uh, 3D map area is usually what you want to use. At this point, you'll lay out your area of interest. You do this by tapping where you want and then adjusting using the white corner bubbles. You'll notice the software lays out your flight lines, uh, which are determined based on the settings on the right side of the screen. In order for Ground Station Pro to know the correct parameters for the Phase 1 camera, click on the camera model line and you'll be able to see the camera you want to work with. If you haven't used Ground Station Pro yet, you'll have to input the camera parameters as a new custom camera. Scroll down to the bottom of the list and you'll see a new custom camera in there. This is where you will select to input the new parameters. Uh, you'll see here the settings for the IXM100 with a 35 millimeter lens. 
However, you can find all these all this information on our website for any range of our cameras. Um, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out, and I'm happy to help. So once you select the camera, you'll go back and you'll see the lines will adjust to match the camera. Then once you go over to the advanced tab, this is where you're able to set the overlap, course angle, and gimbal pitch angle according to the parameters of your mission. One of the things I really like about Ground Station Pro is when you use an oblique angle for the gimbal angle, it will automatically adjust the flight lines in order to capture the correct AOI. Most other apps do not do this, so be careful when you're adding obliques, you won't get coverage at the, at the beginning of your line. Let's see, it's shifted like that. Next, I want to point out the camera capture interval. The first one you see there uh, with the F means for the forward overlap, and it's the distance between the forward pictures according to the overlap settings you set. This is what we will use for the auto triggering in IX Capture Mobile. So make sure to write it down, keep track of it. And then once we move over to IX Capture Mobile, you'll see here under the auto capture an area to input the distance measurement that you want to go on. I'll make sure to note that this distance is in measure in meters. Uh, Ground Station Pro can be set up to work in both meters or feet, uh, so just be aware of it when you're writing down your, your distance. I've found the best way uh, to use our systems with DJI is to use the auto capture on distance mode, uh, how I laid out. However, you can also use, you can also trigger by time but I find that it leads to extra images uh, because occasionally the drone will pause at the end of the line, uh, whereas the distance measurement will only take pictures based on how far the drone moves. So it depends again uh, if you're okay with extraneous images or if you'd rather uh, have them more based on distance. After adjusting your exposure and checking your focus distance on the auto capture mode, then you can start your flight with your auto with your flight planning software. Uh, speaking of exposure, you'll see on the left hand of the screen here is a histogram. <clears throat> this is what we enabled back in Capture One with the DJI overlay for the HDMI. I'm sure many of you are familiar with histograms and exposure, but I'll just give you a quick rundown in case. A histogram is a graph showing the number of pixels in an image at every tonal value, from pure black at the left to pure white at the right. This gives you an objective view of the exposure of a scene. Ideally, the curve will start and end around zero, thus indicating that everything is exposed correctly and nothing has been blown out. However, you'll, this overall will change depending on the scene that you're taking pictures of. A lot of aerial work will be a pretty typical bell curve with the majority of the pixels clumped towards the middle. Uh, but you'll notice based on what you're taking pictures of, whether it be a forest, it might be more towards the left, towards black, or uh, if you're taking pictures in the snow, you'll see it clumped more towards the, towards the right in the white area, as you notice here. Now, in order to get the proper exposure, we need to be able to balance the three different settings, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Each has its effect on the image. Shutter speed controls the blur, so depending on the flight height and speed, you're gonna to wanna to keep it sufficiently quick. I recommend trying to stay above 1 800th of a second. However, if you're stopping at every exposure, you can make that lower. Uh, if you're going faster, then make it higher. ISO controls noise, with the lower numbers being a cleaner image. Typically, I find with aerial work, you end up in the two to 400 ISO range. And finally, aperture controls the amount of light. This has an impact on depth of field. However, since aerial work is mostly high enough that the depth of field does not come into play, this allows the most flexibility 
in selecting how much light you want to use. Uh, typically, I recommend using something in the f6.7 to f range, but again, this will have an impact on the shutter speed and ISO that you're allowed to use. So feel free to balance it. Uh, this exposure triangle here is a good way of illustrating the relationship between the three and how you would move between them. So as I mentioned earlier, you start with the setup. These are one-time uh, connections between setting up the software and the physical connections between the camera and the drone. Plan your flights. Uh, you can use a number of software, uh, like I mentioned earlier. And finally, go out there and start flying. It really is that simple. It's a quick, easy setup. And then once you're out there, you can start collecting images like this resolution like that, and then creating point clouds like this. With that, we come to the end of our webinar. I thank you very much for listening. I hope this will help get you a solid start working with our cameras on DJI. And now I will open up for questions. Please ask if you have anything. If not, please feel free to reach out after the webinar. You can find both my email and phone number uh, on our website or reach out to anyone at phase one. I'm always happy to answer questions for you. Thank you very much.